Welcome to Causality. In this presentation, I will cover cause and effect principles and touch on quantum mechanics. The single greatest intellectual battle for mankind will have to be the origin of our marvelous universe. In the very beginning, cosmologists stated that there was an absolute void of space, time, and matter. Spontaneously out of nowhere, there were quantum fluctuations and a massive expansion explosion, thus creating our universe. The implication of this theory is that matter and energy, including physical space, matter, energy, and time sprang into existence 13.7 billion years ago. The normal follow-up question is, what caused this explosion to happen? Cosmologist's short answer is, we don't know. When there is a gap in our scientific discourse, it does not equate to unsubstantiated guesses such as deities, gods, or the supernatural. Many religions have concocted an explanation of how the universe came into being. An infinite, intelligent agent spoke it into existence. Over the course of history, mankind has always rationalized a god or deity into the mix whenever they didn't understand something. This argument is commonly known as the God of the Gaps fallacy. Supernatural explanations for phenomena are decreasing gradually, and the more scientific discoveries we uncover, the need for the supernatural will become ever so obsolete. The prime mover or cosmological argument goes as follows. According to monotheists, everything that come into existence had a preceding cause and then a follow-up effect. Something had to start the first chain of events and the causing agent had to be uncaused. So if everything has a creator or a cause, why does this exclude God from needing a cause? We are now dealing with an infinite regression of causality and this reconstructs our conflict we are trying to solve. Using mysteries to solve mysteries just only creates a bigger mystery. This hypocritical thinking is called special pleading, or when a person gives a set of rules, they do not follow the initial established rules from the onset. Utilizing confirmation bias and circular reasoning that only routes back to the initial baseless assertion only leaves one to delude themselves of imaginary entities that are outside of the realm of reality. Understanding and possessing knowledge negates our cognitive faculty to quote-unquote believe a proposition because it's universally known as an irrefutable fact. If there were an eternal, omnipotent, megagalactic, anthropomorphic being to which produced our universe, I think by now cosmologists, physicists, and other various modern scientists will have some sort of detection of him at our present state of knowledge. The overwhelming majority of modern scientists are atheistic in nature and have no belief in anything supernatural, and the same can be said for archaeologists. Anything physical we ever have seen in our world that has came into existence has been a result of a structural configuration of other materials which at one point wasn't the end production. The only way we observed something coming into being was through simple cause and effect, or for every action there is a reaction. Something that isn't existent doesn't cause something that is non-existent to come into existence. This is commonly known as creational ex nihilo, or something created from nothing. The Kalam argument goes as follows. Number 1. Things coming into existence from pre-existing materials has a cause behind it. Number 2. Our universe began to exist, but not from pre-existing material. And finally, number three, our universe ultimately had a cause. This argument fails and fails miserably. As previously stated, God can't cause something to come into existence, such as our universe, with non-existent materials. The universe doesn't exist yet. We cannot say logically that God quote-unquote caused the universe to come into existence. If God did have an influence on the causality of our universe, he has to manipulate or reconfigure pre-existing material into the universe. The construction company caused a building to come into existence from metal, brick, or wood to become the building, or already existing material to become the building. So what was there for God to effect upon, since there was nothing there besides himself floating in a bleak flimsy void? According to Theus, the universe came from nothing and they hold the exact position we hold. When it all boils down, it seemed like theists seemed to want to attribute the cause of the universe to their particular deity and specific religion without any justification, evidence, parallel, or reasoning. 
Let's recap on all of this. Material that doesn't exist can't cause something to exist. If something begins ex nihilo, it wasn't caused by something existing. Our universe began ex nihilo. The universe isn't caused to begin existing by existent materials. Somehow God caused the universe to spontaneously conjure up ex nihilo. The verdict, God can't logically exist. Having it occurred to you that this being existing for an infinite amount of time, all the while bored of loneliness, just to come up with the thought to conjure up something other than himself? Did this God of yours have a choice to create what he allegedly created? If so, why? I will conclude with this. Christians have the audacity to say atheism requires faith. Since when did disbelief, uncertainty, or doubt require to be believed on insufficient evidence? This deity isn't explained in any way other than ancient primitive manuscripts written by illiterate goat herding desert men which are reeked with contradictions, moral atrocities, extraordinary stories, and anonymous authorship which all have to be believed on faith since evidence is lackluster. Belief without evidence or reason is the central thesis of the Christian doctrine besides salvation from an imaginary disease called sin which was created by men to sell their fallacious cure. This doctrine feeds off a of fear of the unknown, death, appeal to human emotion, and even fear of losing loved ones. Faith is the highest obligation for this belief system and is an idolized requirement for the person's salvation. Faith is an utter intellectual dishonesty and a disastrous cognitive dissonance one can possess. Committing the straw man attack on atheist position that we require faith, all the while faith is the central possession of this doctrine, is not only a lie of equivocation, but also a logical fallacy. Thanks for watching Causality. If you like this video, please feel free to press the like and subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter here, and be sure to head over to my channel and check out some of my previous presentations and animations.